listening to This Week in Big Sky Basketball as we take you around the conference for all the latest in Big Sky hoops. Now, here's your host, Scott Gerard. Welcome on in. It's the final edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Hey, we are down to the final week of the regular season in Big Sky Hoops, and there's a lot up for grabs before we set the tournament field for Boise coming up on Saturday. The Idaho women and Montana men lead the standings heading into the final week with 15 and 3 records, while Northern Colorado is chasing the leader on both sides at 14 and 4. Now we're joined by Montana senior guard Ahmad Rory, Idaho women's coach John Newley, as well as Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. We'll discuss obviously some of the big storylines from around the league. First, though, let's take a look at what's been happening in Big Sky men's basketball. Montana kept a hold of first place in the standings with home wins over Southern Utah and Northern Arizona last week. The Grizz survived a scare from NAU, hanging on for a two-point win to improve to 15-3 and in the league and stay one game ahead of Northern Colorado. At 14-4, and Northern Colorado posted wins over Weber State and Idaho State at home to extend its win streak to three games as Jordan Davis averaged 27 points per game and moved into second on the Big Sky career scoring list with 2,208 points. Montana State took over sole possession of third place in the standings at 11-7 and with wins over Northern Arizona and Southern Utah at home. Harold Frey recorded a pair of 30-point games to average 31 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists. Weber State continues to struggle, having now dropped three straight after losses to Northern Colorado and Idaho State on the road. Wildcats moved into a tie for fourth along Eastern Washington at 10-8. and eight. The Eagles split action this week in a pair of close games after falling to Sacramento State on Thursday by three. Kim Aiken delivered a game-winning three at the buzzer to lift the Eagles to a win over Portland State, 68-66. That three-pointer was featured at number six on SportsCenter's top ten that night. Idaho snapped a 14-game skid on Saturday as the Vandals took down Sacramento State by four to close out the week after coming just short to Portland State two days earlier in a two-point loss at home. All right, now time to check in with one of the top players in the Big Sky this season, one of the leaders for Big Sky front runner, uh, player of the year, uh, Montana's Ahmad Rory. Ahmad, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. How you doing? Doing well. Hey, you guys have had your fair share of uh, close games lately, including that two-point victory over Northern Arizona. Talk about what your team's been able to do to win some of these close games coming down the stretch. <clears throat> yeah, you know, we try to just stay consistent. We you know that we're at the top right now. Every team is, you know, giving us their best shot. So right now what we're trying to do is just grind them out. You know, yesterday I didn't have a good shoot tonight, but, you know, Mike came in, dominated, Saeed did what he did. So we know that each day it might be a new person. So right now we're trying to just grind out wins, you know, so we get to the end. So right now everybody's just playing together and playing smooth and we're able to get some wins. <clears throat> do you kind of Do you kind of enjoy being the top dog and getting everybody's best shot when you go out and play? Yeah, for sure. You know, it kind of kind of leaves us with a tip on our shoulder. You know, we get a different look from each team. You know, some teams will try to, you know, play me harder. Teams will try to play Saeed harder. So, you know, we have to adjust, but I think that's what makes it fun and it brings us together as a team. You know, we don't want every game to just be a blowout and every team just lay down. We like how every team is coming at us and giving us their best shot. You transferred back to Montana in 2015, but you've certainly made your mark on that program in just three years. Talk about what that career has been like for you at Montana, and uh, what was it about this program that decided that's where you wanted to finish your college basketball playing career? Yeah, you know, it's been real special for me to be able to come here. The whole city welcomed me with open arms, you know. So it's been great, you know, good experience. You know, kind of sad that I played my last game in Dahlberg Arena yesterday, but, you know, it's a little bittersweet. But, yeah, um, Trav and I, Coach, Coach Travis, we've known each other for a long time, so wanted to, you know, come out here and um, play for him. You know, he's a real good coach, and he knows my game, so I so felt like if I came out here, he would allow me, you know, just do what I do, and that's how it's been these last two years. This conference is just loaded with guards, especially over the last season. As a guard, what's it like playing in such a guard-heavy conference where it seems like you've got a stud that you're going up against every single game? Yeah, you know, it's nice. You know, a lot of a lot of the guards in this conference, you know, specialize in scoring, you know, but I think what makes me different is I'm able to get my teammates involved. I'm kind of versatile in a lot of ways, but a lot of the other guards in this conference just want to get buckets to score. So, um, if you, I feel like with my team and myself, you just kind of shut them down with scoring, then 
them being non factor, you know, so to say. So but it's definitely nice, you know, taking the challenge of doing that every night is real is real special. Do you feel like this has made you a better defender, being able to go against so many good guards game after game? Yeah, for sure. You know, you have to. You know, you scored on a lot, and then I mess with your head. So you got to really lock in on defense, be ready to just slide your feet, and then keep them out the pain and keep them scoring. Ahmad Rory, kind enough to join us here on this weekend, Big Sky Basketball. You're part of a special class there in Montana, four great seniors on that roster. What's it been like playing alongside those three guys? Yeah, you know, it's been special. Um, that's all I can say about that. You know, they bring it every day in practice. They're ready to compete all the time. You know, Jamal has a little injury right now, but he's been the most dominant big in the conference. You know, Mike, he's been has been real special playing with him in the backcourt. Um, he can lob it up so many times, you know. He has times where he dominates, you know, the glass. He dominates going to the basket. So I always can rely on him to, you know, play hard and, you know, get us going. Bobby. So like he's a defensive player of the year, man. He just guards everybody in practice. He guards everybody in the games. And, you know, he's real tough. You know, we're from the same hometown, so I've known him the, long, the longest. But, yeah, he's a real tough kid. And I feel like this class has been real special. Everyone's bought in and just winning. So that's what we've been able to do. You're looking for that second straight Big Sky regular season title, hoping to get back to the NCAA tournament again. Uh, what do you guys need to do this final week and in the uh, in the conference tournament? Make sure you get back to the NCAA's. Well, yeah, we we actually we all Portland State, you know, so we're gonna come out here real. I know everyone's gonna come out real hype with a lot of fire. You know, they beat us at home to end our um, streak and give us our first loss in conference play. So we got to come out here and play stronger and play faster than them. You know, there's a team that likes to get up and press you. So if you're strong with the ball, you know, Sac State, they're dangerous too. You know, they've played us close a lot of games since I've been here. Um, and then going into the tournament, you know, like I try to tell my teammates now, like once you get there, like all the regular season stuff doesn't matter. Like the only thing that matters is winning three games in a row and then get into the tournament. So, you know, there's going to be some teams that are going to pull off some upsets. And we just don't want to be that team that gets upset, you know. So we need to come out. Strong, we get everybody to be focused. I feel like if we just stick to our game plan, just play our game, we'll be just fine. Ahmad, appreciate the conversation, man. Uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, good luck the rest of the week and uh, into Boise as well. Thanks for having me, man. You got it. Ahmad Rory, great conversation with him, senior guard from Montana. For the last 30 years, Sports Graphics has been a leader in providing signage and services for the top professional and amateur sporting events across the country. That's why the Big Sky Conference is proud to work with Sports Graphics for all their signage at Big Sky Championships. Sports Graphics, proud sponsor of the Big Sky. Take a quick break, come back. Idaho women's coach John Newley will join the program. We'll also discuss what's been going on around the scene in Big Sky women's basketball. It's all straight ahead. You're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. CenturyLink Arena plays host to the 2019 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships in Boise. Postseason college basketball is back in Boise, and we have your front row seat to the event. The women's tournament will be held March 11th through the 15th, while the men's championship will take place March 13th through the 16th. The wait is over. 22 teams, 20 games, two champions. Don't miss your chance to buy tickets for this fun-filled week of basketball. Tickets are on sale now at BigSkyInBoise.com. Traveling to watch your favorite team, or you just need a weekend away? Let My Place be your place for both. My Place Hotels is proud to be the official hotel of the Big Sky Conference. And now you can use booking code BIGSKY19 to receive 19% off your stay at MyPlaceHotels.com. You're listening to This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Welcome on back to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Hey, the 2019 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships presented by My Place Hotels are headed to Boise, Idaho in 2019, and we're just a week away. The Big Sky in Boise.com is where you need to go. Purchase your tickets, get hotel information. The Big Sky Conference takes over Boise March 11th through the 16th, and we want to see everybody out there. Now, remember, if you need a hotel for work or just a night away, with over 44 hotels open and more on the way, My Place Hotels is where you want to be to get your home away from home. My Place Hotels, proud to be the official hotel 
of the Big Sky Conference. All right, let's take a look at what's been going on in the Big Sky women's basketball side. As we enter the final week of play, the postseason bracket now becoming a little clearer, but there's still a lot to be decided. Idaho State has fallen into a tie for third with Portland State after both teams went 1-1 one and one on the week. Idaho State lost their only matchup of the week to Northern Colorado, 61-59 to slide into the standings. Grace Kenyon continued to lead the way for the Bengals, had 19 points and 7 rebounds against the Bears. Portland State split their games last week after opening the week with an 81-68 loss to Idaho. The Vikings bounced back to pick up a much-needed win over Eastern Washington. Sidney Riley led the team with 16 points for the Vikings. Northern Colorado moved into sole possession in second place of their win over Idaho State to start the week. Savannah Smith continues to fuel that bear offense against the Bengals. She scored 33 points on 10 of 28, then followed that performance with a 36-point performance against Weber State. Still st- uh, sitting atop the uh, top spot in the standings is Idaho. Vandals hold a one-game lead over the Bears, and with an Idaho win and a Northern Colorado loss, the Vandals can clinch the season title. Vandals went on the road last week for a big matchup against Portland State, came away with an 81-68 victory. Michaela Ferenz and Taylor Pierce continue to be a handful for opposing defenses. Ferenz averaged 19 19.5 points, while Pierce averaged 24 points. And joining us today is the head coach of the lead-leading Vandals, John Newley, kind enough to join us. Coach, how are you? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for having me. Well, we're always excited to catch uh, catch up with you. Congratulations, and I know you don't, you don't want to hear that yet. The season's not quite over, but what's it been like in the big sky this season, knowing that, frankly, there's nothing's forgiven this year. It's been kind of an interesting up-and-down year. Yeah, it really has. I mean, you see the uh, you know the last-place teams beating the teams that were leading. Uh, it's, at one point, there's you know such parity in our league it's it's crazy every night you got to bring it like i tell our players and uh yeah it's been it's been that kind of year you have two really good shooters really good players in Michaela and Taylor what's it been like to coach them during their careers it's been fantastic you know it's really uh it's really been such a pleasure for me to be able to uh, dive as deep into my playbook as I as I want to and uh, really be creative with those two. Uh, they make it really easy for me. And, um, you know, they're such great kids. They work hard. They're our hardest workers, you know, the 4.0 students. And uh, they just love the game of basketball. And uh, you can't ask for any more than those two have done for me in their careers. Uh, there's still a lot of basketball to be played, and you guys have a big matchup against Idaho State on Saturday. Uh, where's your team's focus going into a big game like that? Well, we got to focus on Weber State on Thursday. Uh, you know, yeah. this has been our deal really for the last three weeks. Um, you know, I've been telling them. You know, I know it's a cliche, but it is really one game at a time. We we can't afford to slip up with a one game lead. And you know, the game's huge on Thursday because we win on Thursday, we clinch a share of the of the big of the title, the Big Sky title. And so that's always, of course, was our goal coming in is to get a get a Big Sky title regular season um, and then move on into the tournament. So Thursday is a huge game for us. It's something we're really focused on. And then, of course, uh, Senior Day will be Saturday against the Bengals. You know, I want to circle back a little bit to uh, Michaela Ferenz and Taylor Pierce. You talk about them as good players, and uh, but, but from a leadership standpoint, uh, what have they brought to the table, and how have they been able to, to hold on to that locker room and keep, them, uh, keep that locker room where it needs to be? Well, you know, like I said, they're such good kids, and they're so humble. You know, I've never coached two kids with the skills that they have that are so unselfish, and I think that just permeates through our team. You know, they understand if somebody has a great shot, they're going to give up their good shot. Uh, they're so unselfish with each other. I mean, you know, you got the big sky, the all-time big sky leading scorer in Michaela Ferenz, unbelievable achievement. And Taylor Pierce is the number one three-point shooter in the country, you know, uh, and career-wise. So, um, you know, they've both done a co- amazing things on the floor, but uh, to be able to get in the locker room and, and show that leadership, I mean, they've grown through the program. They've been here four years. You know, they're not transfers. They haven't set out. They, they've been here through, uh, you know, they played in the NCAA tournament as freshmen. They know what it's like. They played in the NIT. They, they've done things team-wise that they can uh, relate back to the younger kids and let them know how we got that done and how we won championships here. I know there's uh, only one week left in the regular season, but what's your point of emphasis? What needs to, what needs to be the keys to your uh, keys to a couple of wins to end the season, and then going into conference play in Boise or tournament play in Boise? Uh, you know, everybody of course talks about our high octane offense, but really 
the the thing that's fueled us the most has been defensively in the games that we've really played extremely well. We've really got after people defensively and rebounded the basketball. And I know those are certainly two staples that every coach talks about, but but it's true with us. I think you know we know we can score. We we certainly have a lot of firepower here. But we got to really be able to play some lockdown defense and rebound the basketball. And I think once we started rebounding better at both ends and playing uh, better defense, that's when our team really took off this year. Is rebounding a mindset, or do you, is it technique, or is it just all of the above? I think it's a mindset. I think it's uh, it's it's uh, effort <laughs> more than anything. You know, you got to be you got to be up for getting that basketball every single time, and you can't be afraid. You got to be physically tough and. I think our two clinker sisters from Montana, uh, once they really kick it into gear, they are they are awesome rebounders. They're they're like Rodman's, you know. They they <laughs> go get the ball and uh, and they really fuel us um, on the glass, and that's really brought a big spark to us. Well, coach, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Good luck this week, and good luck into Boise as well. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Idaho women's coach John Newley right here on This Week in Big Sky Basketball. When we come back, we'll preview the week ahead in the Big Sky Conference. We'll have a visit with Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports, and we'll tell you where you can find all the Big Sky, Big Sky games on television this weekend. It's another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for Big Sky action. The leading free internet television service in America will stream live sporting events, including up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, and selected soccer, softball, and track and field events. Simply go to Pluto TV to find games from several different sports. Pluto TV is your one-stop shop for all Big Sky action. The 2019 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships are headed to Boise. Buy your tickets now for a fun-filled week with basketball for all to enjoy. Purchase your tickets today by visiting BigSkyInBoise.com. That's BigSkyInBoise.com. Now, back to this week in Big Sky Basketball. Final segment of the show. You're listening to another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball. I'm Scott Gerard. Hey, the Big Sky will air all of its live stream sports events for Pluto TV for free. Up to 700 football, men's and women's basketball, volleyball, selected soccer, and softball. And remember, track and field coming up as well. All Big Sky basketball games can be watched and uh, seen on Big Sky and Pluto TV. With a lot to be decided in the men's standings, Weber State and Idaho State welcome in Idaho and Eastern Washington in this week's action, while Portland State and Sacramento State play host to Montana and Montana State. Southern Utah will host Northern Colorado in its final regular season game before the Bears host Northern Arizona to round out the action. On the women's side, Idaho and Eastern Washington host Weber State and Idaho State in the final week, while Montana and Montana State bring in Portland State and Sacramento State. Northern Colorado hosts Southern Utah before traveling to Northern Arizona in the final games of the week. And remember, every single Big Sky Conference game can be seen on Pluto TV and WatchBigSky.com for free and in high definition. Whether you're watching on a tablet, smartphone, laptop, or desktop, you can access Big Sky Basketball wherever you go. All right, time to welcome in Coulter Nuanez of Skyline Sports. Coulter, how you doing, man? Yeah, I believe this is the last one, but it's about to be March Madness, so I'm doing great. How you doing? I know. I'm doing well. It's down the, uh, down the home stretch we come. There's no doubt about it. Let's talk about... Idaho and Montana leading the way in our standings. Do you see those teams hanging on and getting those one seeds going into the tournament? Well, it's going to be interesting because, you know, Montana, they, they won their final home game last night. Michael Ogine uh, just put the team on his back, and, and he, he did what seniors do this time of year and lifted Montana to a really gritty win over a Northern Arizona team that plays really hard. I was actually really impressed with Northern Arizona. They're young. They don't have hardly any upperclassmen, but they, they play as hard as anybody I've seen in the league. So great job by Jack Murphy, testament to him. But um, Ogini was just too much. But now you know, Montana has a very interesting scenario to close out the season. One of their three league losses was to Portland State back in overtime in Missoula. That snapped their 20-game home winning streak. They got to play at Portland State on Thursday. It's a little bit of a revenge element in that game. I mean, on Saturday, they got to play at Sacramento State and – the thing that's so funny about this league, so much of it is just about matchups and, and how do you do in specific places. And for whatever reason, 
Travis Secure has struggled uh, at the nest. I think he's only won one time in Sacramento in his previous four seasons. So that's always been a place that's given Montana trouble. So even though you talk about two teams that are kind of in the middle to bottom half of the standings on the men's side in Sac State and Portland State, no easy games for Montana. And with Northern Colorado nipping at their heels, we still have a race. So we won't one weekend left, and then there's still two teams that could win this thing. And uh, you know, I think that's something that's going to spur the Grizz on, no doubt, because I think that they really, really want to hang that regular season banner. They, they, they have the buy sewed up. They're going to be a top-two seed. But I know it's really important to those seniors to win the regular season. And then on the women's side, you know, it's pretty interesting because Idaho definitely is in the driver's seat, but we have kind of a de facto preview uh, as well as Big Sky Championship game in Moscow on Saturday afternoon. Senior night for Michaela Friends and Taylor Pierce, so that's sure to be emotional. And then an in-state rivalry with Idaho, Idaho State, two of the best teams in the league. So uh, it's still a lot to be determined on both sides, even though Montana and Idaho have been the front runners all year. Uh, they still have to take care of business if they want to hang that regular season better. So let's extend it a little bit with some of the uh, first-round buy spots open. Uh, how do you see the standings panning out during the final week? Well, uh, on the men's side, you know, Weber State is, is in uh, sort of a funk, which yeah, I know a lot of it has to do with injuries. You know, uh, Jack Braxton has been hurt. Jared Harding, uh, he rolled his ankle. And they talk about a, an explosive guy like that. That's going to hinder you. Uh, but you always have to expect Randy Ray's teams to be ready by the time the tournament rolls around. When you got a scorer like Harding, uh, all bets are off. He, he can definitely carry all the way if he gets hot. Eastern Washington, same situation. They lost Jacob Davidson, and I know his status is still questionable, and he's kind of straw stirs the drink for them. But, you know, one of the untold stories, I, I shouldn't say untold, but one of the stories that needs to be told more is the emergence of Harold Frey. I mean, Tyler Hull is the all-time greatest scorer in the history of the Big Sky Conference at Montana State. But Harold Frey, to me, has emerged as an absolute lock as a first-team All-League player. He straight up won him two games this weekend. I mean, he had, he had 30, 30 points and 32 points back-to-back nights, and that's with being a pass-first point guard. So the guy is operating at an unbelievable level of efficiency. I think that gives Montana State uh, a, a for-sure chance when we get into the tournament. And then on the women's side, uh, it's been just kind of the same tiers in the league. It's been Idaho, Idaho State, uh, Portland State, and Northern Colorado as that top four core. Montana State has just been the kind of alone in that fifth spot, and then everybody else has kind of faded. You know, Lady Grizz have really had a hard time as of late. Uh, their depth issues. I mean, they only Shannon Strain only has like seven players available to her right now because of their injury situation. So she's playing her up for class with 40 minutes a game, and I think it's starting to kind of wear on them. And I think that's why they've lost three straight. But you know, Montana State, they, they when they're good. They've been really good. They're just really trying to figure out a way to adjust without Claire Lindbergh. She was definitely an all-league player before she got hurt. And now Montana State's definitely emerging again. Madeline Smith had a great game last night. She had 26 points uh, as they defeated Southern Utah. Uh, so the Bobcats are an interesting one because they've had to kind of remake themselves midway through the year here. Uh, but when they're at their best, I definitely think they can hang with those top four teams. We'll see if they can hit that stride, though, uh, in Boise next week. You talk about Harold Frey a little bit as uh, an all-conference player, and I'm kind of putting you on the spot here a little bit. You don't need to name your entire teams, but give me your uh, you know guys that definitely need, or you know, men and women that definitely need to be on those all-conference teams. Well, it's funny because we were thinking about this. You know, I, I had nine guys on my list that were kind of nominees for the first team all league, and I think that right now, I think Jordan Davis is an absolute lock. I think he's probably the front runner uh, for MVP at Northern Colorado. I think Ahmad Rory has to be a lock. I know he had zero points on, on uh, senior night last night in Missoula, but that, that's inconsequential. The way that he plays on-ball defense, the way he dictates the tempo of the game, I think he's the best uh, tempo controller in the entire league. And after last night, I mean, after having 37, or 32 points and seven assists, Harold Frey's got to be a first-team all-league lock. And then I think the other guys that are kind of in the mix there are going to be Saeed Pridgett, Michael Ogine from Montana, uh, as well as Jared Harding from Weber State. Marcus Graves from Sac State, Holland Woods from Portland State. So guard heavy, definitely in the league. But I think that right now the three locks got to be uh, Jordan Davis and Harold Frey and uh, Ahmad Rory. And then on the women's side, I think that Taylor Pierce, Michaela Friends, the Splash Sisters, Idaho, absolute locks. I think Savannah Smith and Northern Colorado, an absolute lock. And then the rest of it's going to be pretty interesting because Grace Kenyon and Taylor Grandin, both at Idaho State, have had great years. Uh, Ashley Bolston, Sidney Riley. Uh, have both had great seasons at Portland State, uh, so there's a lot of talented on the girls on the on the women's side here that are going to be in the mix. But uh, you know, I, I think that there's some real 
MVP candidates on both sides, and I think that's going to be an interesting race as well. I, you know, I think Jordan Davis, Harold Bray, and Ahmad Rory all have skin in the game there. And Savannah, I mean, picking between Savannah Smith and Michaela Friends, I don't know how you do it because you're talking about <laughs> not only – I mean, you're talking two of, the, two of the literally the best players in the history of the league, in my opinion. So um, yeah, it's going to be a fun race to see who wins these individual awards, and it's also going to be fun to see who carries their team in Boise next week. We've asked you this a couple times throughout the uh, throughout the season here on this week in Big Sky Basketball, but this will be our last time to chat with you, so I wanted you to kind of throw out maybe some sleepers, some teams that may have flown under the radar but might be playing some of their best basketball going into Boise who may not be one of the top seeds but should, could certainly cause some problems for some teams. Who should we be keeping an eye on coming up in Boise next week? Well, the, the two teams that I watched live in Montana this week uh, on the men's side are, are definitely teams to – that could be a threat. You know, the, the neutral site tournament is definitely it has its pluses and minuses, but when you have teams that are really young teams like Jack Murphy has in Northern Arizona and you kind of know that chasing that first round by is not going to be really realistic for you, I think you can trust the process and get better throughout the year. And I think Northern Arizona has gotten better throughout the year. I think that they really are playing really well right now. And you're talking about a lineup that has three freshmen and two sophomores in it. So those guys, if they get it to click, they could be a team that could upset and win a couple of games. The other thing is Southern Utah. You know, Southern Utah has not been in a position where they're kind of in the middle of the league like they, like they are right now. They've been towards the bottom. But that said, they've won as many tournament games as anybody since Todd Simon yeah. took over. I mean, they beat Montana State a couple of years ago in the tournament. Last year, as the 10th seed, they made it all the way to the semifinals. So Southern Utah knows how to win in, in neutral court tournaments. And I think that, that'll be definitely intriguing. And on the women's side, you know, Montana State, if they can continue to find their flow without Claire Lundberg, they could be a threat. I know they're in the fifth spot, so that's not necessarily a surprise. Uh, Sac State, the style that they play, the fact that they, they press you all the time, if they speed you up, they could steal a game uh, here or there. And, you know, the thing is, Montana has been decimated by injuries since Shannon Twain took over. They've had so many girls go down with season-ending injuries. And it's been kind of crazy to watch. I mean, the luck has just been terrible on the Lady Grizz side of things. But you got to remember, this is a Lady Grizz program that's one of the most prestigious programs in the history of women's college basketball. And they still have players that understand that winning tradition, like Jace Henderson and Mackenzie Johnston and Gabby Harrington. So if those girls can put it together – when the moment is right and, you know, kind of managing the depth issues that they have right now is, is inconsequential because it's tournament time. I wouldn't be surprised if Montana ripped off a couple of wins as well. So uh, it's going to be fun next week. And boys, you can't wait. No doubt about it. Hey, we appreciate your time this week and uh, throughout the rest of the season. I got to imagine you guys have it rolling over there at Skyline Sports leading into the tournament. Yeah, absolutely. We're working in, in conjunction with the league. So we'll have a, a series of 14 features. We've got, a couple of them already printed, and uh, so we'll have features on all the seniors for Montana and Montana State, as well as uh, Savannah Smith, Jordan Davis, Michaela Ferenz, Taylor Pierce, some of the top players in the entire league. So you can check that out, SkylineSportsMT.com or BigSkyComp.com. Uh, they'll be running both different places, so go check those out. A ton of good players in the league right now. You know, I've covered the league for 13 years. I think the crop on the men's and women's side is as talented and as memorable as we've ever seen, so be sure to go check those out. Coulter, you're the man. Appreciate your help uh, this year. Of course. Thanks so much for having me. You got it. Coulter Noanez right here on This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Big thanks to him. Also, Montana senior guard Amon Rory and Idaho women's head coach John Newley. That wraps it up for us. It's been a great season here on This Week in Big Sky Basketball. Big thanks for the man who puts it together every week, Lloyd Cole, and the executive producers of This Week in Big Sky Basketball, Blake Barrington and Carl Hunt. Hey, just around the corner, it'll be This Week in Big Sky Football. We're just a few months away. Until then, I'm Scott Gerard. Enjoy the games this week. Enjoy the conference tournament in Boise. And we'll be back with you soon on another edition of This Week in Big Sky Basketball.